What's going on guys? This is Vonalik Puma, back with another Borderlands 1 Remastered video, and today I figured I'd go over eight of what I think are among some of the best out-of-map or out-of-bounds glitches that still work in the recently released Borderlands Game of the Year edition. Now, before we start, my goal with this video was to include locations that, one, still work in the remaster, and two, that at most require some level of grenade jumping skill. This means you can perform all of these glitches by yourself outside of co-op, and you're not going to need a lot of special equipment or a special class or anything. Though, and with that said, I would highly recommend you get a low-level longbow grenade to help make your grenade jumps a lot more consistent and predictable. Also, I should mention that I initially learned about a lot of these out-of-map locations from Handsome Jackboy. I'll link his channel in the description, so feel free to check all of that out after you've smashed like on this video. And speaking of likes, as a fun little goal, let's see if we can get this video to 2,000 likes. So if you enjoyed this video on Out of Bounds Areas, definitely be sure to click the like button as it really helps out the channel. Otherwise guys, and without further ado, these are 8 of some of the best out of map glitches that still work in Borderlands 1 Remastered slash Game of the Year Enhanced Edition, starting now. Number 8. The Arid Badlands In addition to being the first in-game area, the Arid Badlands also has an out of bounds location that's fairly easy to get to, and while the areas that you can visit are somewhat limited due to a lot of death walls, it's still a place you can come to regardless of how far you are in the game. To start, you'll need to spawn in the fast travel that's in Firestone, then run towards the catch ride and spawn yourself a vehicle. From here, turn left and go up the hill, then turn left at the top of the hill past TK Baja's house, and try to get your vehicle to land on the edge of the cliff like I'm doing here. If you position yourself correctly, you should be able to drive over or glitch through all of the rocks and invisible barriers, and land on a piece of terrain. From here, simply keep driving and you should be in the out of map area. Now at this point, you'll reach a section where you'll basically be able to go left or right, and if you go left, you can go through the barrier wall that's located here, and if you go right, you can find some more areas where you can fall off terrain, and you can also find some really like super flat areas that you can kind of traverse with your uh, vehicle. Just be aware if you do go right, you can encounter some death walls which will make you respawn if you hit them. In general though, this area is convenient because it can be accessed really early on, but beyond that, I think you'll find that some of the other areas I'm about to go over are more expansive and or they have more interesting things to see. Number 7. Headstone Mine while this specific out-of-map glitch is more easily performed or basically requires a longbow grenade, the area that you can find and traverse is really big. All you have to do is head towards the most southwestern portion of the map that I'll be showing here on screen, and you'll know that you're in the right place if you see a giant gate along with some little houses or huts around it. Take your time to defeat the enemies here, and once the coast is clear, you can use your longbow grenades to grenade jump onto the house, then you can jump on the fence that's near the gate, you can throw a longbow on the fence to get on top of the gate actuator, and then if you do it or time it just right, you can throw another grenade while on top of the actuator to get over the invisible wall that blocks you from accessing the area beyond. The area you can explore here is pretty massive. The initial area features a bulldozer and these weird cone-shaped land masses you can traverse, while beyond that, the player can jump down and explore some massive flatland areas. Just be sure before you jump to anything to shoot the ground that you intend to traverse before jumping to it, as that way you can more easily determine if you're going to land on a solid surface or not. Ultimately, I think you'll find this is a good area to come to and explore since you will eventually come here during the main story, so be sure to come here after you've completed some of the story missions if you're looking for a good area to glitch into. Number 6. Crom's Canyon So, Crom's Canyon has an out-of-map area that can be accessed relatively easily by heading to the northernmost part of the eastern path on the map. I'll show a little diagram of where you'll need to go here in video, but you'll know that you're in the right place as there should be a few bandit dwellings and a bridge nearby. What we're going to want to do is get up to a plateau with a house on it via grenade jumps. 
And this is normally a bit easier in the non-remastered version of the game, but if you kind of throw the grenade down like I'm doing here on video, you can kind of cling to the walls and jump up, allowing you to reach the top of the plateau. Once you've reached the top of the plateau, you're going to want to sort of align yourself like I'm doing here in video, and then just jump off. This should allow you to avoid the death walls that are present in the area, and you'll know you've pulled this off correctly if you manage to have an invisible barrier slow down your fall somewhat before hitting the ground. From here, and once you've gotten to the ground, you can pretty much just explore this massive out-of-bounds area that extends pretty far beyond the confines of the level. I will admit there isn't an insane amount of stuff to explore here, but coming here could prove to be an interesting experience if you already know about some of the other areas I've gone over, or I am about to go over. Either way, it's a cool little area to explore, and could be something fun to do by yourself or with a group of friends. Number 5. The Doll Headlands the Doll Headlands feature a fairly easy place to glitch out that requires more caution on the behalf of the player rather than any real skill. All you have to do is simply summon a vehicle at a catch -a ride station, travel to the northernmost part of the map that I've outlined here, and you should see a rock wall. While in your vehicle, drive straight into the wall and rather than stop, your vehicle will get lodged in the wall. From here, make sure to use the camera so you can check if you're going to be able to safely get out, and if it looks like you won't fall through the floor, get out of your vehicle. From here, try to hug the wall you just rammed into while also standing on the sliver of land that's left over. And if you look down, you should be able to jump down to a floor that I'm showing you here in video. Once you've done that, you've pretty much reached the main out-of-bounds area. Like I mentioned with Crom's Canyon, this is another massive area you can explore. Unlike the canyon though, there's one point of interest as there is this pyre in what appears to be in a lake, and depending on how you approach it, the entire screen will suddenly get red. Other areas also do this, and I don't know if this is to indicate you're encountering a death wall, but it is worth noting and it does look kinda cool. Beyond that, the rest of the area is just a large open expanse with random plants interspersed throughout the environment, and that could be pretty cool for you to explore. In the end, this is a pretty big area you can explore and is pretty easy to access. Just be sure when you exit your vehicle after ramming that rock wall that you don't fall through the floor. Not to be confused with floor, we have number four, and that is the Crimson Tollway. The Crimson Tollway is another really easy place to glitch out of as all you have to do is travel to the southernmost road fork. While there is a barrier here that would normally prevent the player from passing, the Nox DLC's developers never really patched the gap between the barrier and the curb. Thus, the player can either walk between the barrier and the curb, or the player can jump up on the curve and just run past the barrier. From here, you will come across a break in the road, however, you can strategically position yourself and throw a grenade to grenade jump across the gap, like I've done here in video. And once you're across, you can either continue to take the road until it ends, or you can drop to the road below it and then drop to the ground below that to check out the giant reptile skeleton thing that's located here. My only real complaint with this area is that there are a bunch of death walls here and that they always seem to be in places you never really expect. So this can really restrict your ability to explore and should be something you should be aware of before coming here. At the same time, since all of this is so easy to access provided you're good at grenade jumping, I think it's fair to say that the death walls aren't really that much of an issue because it's so easy to get here in the first place. I'd say this is a good place to glitch out of map from. Hopefully Gearbox or the Borderlands 1 remaster team will leave this section open and not patch it. But if they do, I guess it was fun while it lasted. Number 3. Earl's Scrapyard now, if you've played Borderlands 2 and discovered some of its out-of-map locations, you'll know that you can get to these weird rectangular prism objects that are below the map. You may be interested to know that Borderlands 1 and the Enhanced Edition have similar areas you can access, and one of those can be easily accessed in Earl's Scrapyard. Starting at the entrance or fast travel, the player should follow the path and find the second skag den that they see. You know it's the right one, as it has a small ledge just above the den itself, and once you've found it, jump on top of the den, and then jump up on onto the ledge just above it. 
Once you're up here, you can walk around on top of the walls that you normally didn't have access to. From here, you can clip through the trash in the wall to your left and simply jump from rock to rock. And in order to get to the rectangular prism or cube, be sure to face in the direction where the wall is to your left, walk through the wall, and then turn around and jump up on the rocks. Go straight until you see an area where it looks like you can drop off, and then just fall through the map. At this point, you should see a small little rectangle, and all you have to do to reach it is just press forward on your controller or keyboard, and be sure to keep the rectangle outlined in your reticle. Once you reach the rectangle, you should fall through and enter this weird black environment. You can only exit this area by saving and quitting the game, so you'll need to be aware of that if you wish to explore this area, so it might not be a good idea to come here with a group of friends. Otherwise, there's not really much else to this area. While it's not very big, it's a great way to access one of the rectangular cubes you see when you fall through the maps when you go out of bounds in other areas. Just make sure you don't do this in co-op as you might get stuck here and then you'll have to save and quit out. Number 2. Skag Gully Like the Arid Hills out of map location, the Skag Gully location can be reached early on in the game as well. While it's a little more difficult to access this out of map location as you'll need to learn how to grenade jump, it's actually easier to access this area in the remaster due to how the player characters seem to cling to the walls much better when compared to the standard Game of the Year release. In order to access this area, you'll need to head to the location I've marked on your map. Here, you should find a wall that you can jump up by mashing the jump button, and once you get about halfway up the wall, you can grenade jump up, which should land you on top of the entire wall. From here, simply walk out across the stone protrusion that you see, and then jump to the next stone protrusion that you see, and then turn left, and then grenade jump up to the next wall. Once you've done this, you can look to your left and you can see inside some of the Skag Gully caves and you can actually jump onto these like surfaces that it looks like you're going to fall through. Alternatively, you can also continue along the path of rock walls and you should eventually see a rack hive on your right. There is a way to actually get down there, but you need to be careful as there are a bunch of death walls here and you're going to have to follow the path that I'm showing in video. Basically what we're doing here is we're just going around the death walls. If you were to go straight to the rack hive, you would hit a death wall and it would make you respawn. However, if you go around like I'm doing here, you can actually get up and behind the little rack hive here. And it's actually a solid object, which is kind of neat because a lot of the objects around it, you can clip through. For an early game area though, Skag Gully's out of map potential is really good. So be sure to come here and check things out when you get the chance. And for our final entry, number one, T-Bone Junction. Have you ever wanted to mess around and effectively free roam with a vehicle in Borderlands 1? Well, this particular T-Bone Junction out of map glitch might just be for you. All you have to do is load into T-Bone Junction, get yourself a vehicle with scooters, and then drive to the circular road and off of the cliff like I'm doing here in video. Now normally if you do this, you'll immediately get respawned at a new U because you basically die. However, if you manage to swap from the driver to gunner seat in mid-air while doing all of this, you can bypass the death wall here. In Borderlands 1 Remastered, you'll know you did this correctly when you start to see the screen have this reddish hue. Now, I don't know why this occurs, but it is a cool effect, and it does let you know that it essentially all worked. Once you've gotten past the death wall though, you can now travel around a massive sandbox with all of the newly added cars from the DLC. For example, maybe you want to speed around in the racer, or maybe you just want to use the monster and get a consistent boost. I haven't been able to get the APC to work, but if you have been able to get the APC to work, definitely let everybody know in the comments section below. Now, you will need to be wary while you are near the T-Bone Junction City area. There are a lot of death walls here, and if you're not careful, you can easily get respawned and in some cases, you can get your vehicle locked out of map and teleporting to it will kill you instantly. So once you actually glitch into this area, try to go outwards rather than towards the city. At the end of the day, this is a great place to go and drive all of the Nox DLC vehicles, so be sure to take advantage of this glitch if you're looking to have some fun. Alright guys, thank you all for watching, and I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. 
If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.